<laughs> okay, so does anyone know what the kidneys do? Filter waste money, the toxins on your blood. So it filters your blood. Yes, toxic toxins. And it's also So it makes tea, right? <laughs> it filters, filters our blood. So good, you guys are now so basic. So here's kind of where they're located. Um, so two kind of bean-shaped, approximately fist-sized organs, um, kind of to the back of your body, and they're mostly protected by the back of your rib cage. So um, if you are laying down flat on your stomach and someone is experienced, they can push up kind of underneath their, your ribs a bit. And when you breathe in and out, sometimes you can feel the bottoms of them. So often the bottoms are kind of there, um, but mostly protected by your rib cage. <laughs> and then ureters connected to the bladder and the urethra. So we'll go over more of that, but this, this just shows the positioning in your body, okay? Yeah. Yeah, kidney infections are bad. Yeah. Yeah. Karate chops? <laughs> just felt like it? <laughs> I don't know. I was <laughs> oh, that's weird. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah, kidney infec infections are very painful. <laughs> yeah. So osmoregulation. So we'll start off here, kind of in that first uh, <laughs> that first unit we talked about homeostasis. So ways that our bodies maintain that kind of steady state um, in our body. So our kidneys do a lot of that. So osmoregulation, all that means is that our body controls how much fluid and salt come and go in our body. So our body needs a certain amount of fluid and our body needs a certain amount of salt. So sodium is one of those things that our body needs. So nobody would be on a zero salt diet because our body needs salt. So low salt, yes, but nobody would have zero salt in their diet because you wouldn't be able to survive. So iodized salt, so that's what our table salt is. So that's just sodium, so NaCl is sodium chloride, so that's what table salt is, but iodine is added to it, and that is for our thyroid. So people, and we'll, we'll touch on that in the endocrine system, but people developed a lot of thyroid disease because they didn't have enough iodine in their diet. So our way of counteracting that was adding iodine to table salt. So a lot of people don't end up with that problem because of it. Yeah. So, but tape, so if you buy sea salt, it probably doesn't have iodine in it, though. Yeah. No iodine. Yeah. Dolph, it has iodine in it. Yep. Yep. So osmoregulation is just, so osmosis. If you've ever heard that term, that's just how salt and water passes through cells. So that's what osmo is for, and then regulation. So one major function of our kidneys is this osmo regulation. So we have the right amount of water and the right amount of salt in our body. Um, so we most, are, are humans too, all land animals generally lose water when we urinate, when we defecate, when we just breathing we lose water, sweating we lose water, and we can also lose salt through sweat too. Vomiting, we would lose water and salt. Or electrolytes, if you've um, heard of someone use that term. Um, so the way we counteract that is by eating and drinking. And then our kidneys help to regulate it. Um, so just can, so homeostasis. So besides osmoregulation, the other thing our kidneys uh, do, which Mary said, was excrete waste. So it's controlling water and salt, but it's also filtering is the term she used. So um, it's filtering out things like toxins, some drugs, 
Um, it will filter out byproducts. So when our cells burn energy, they give off carbon dioxide, which we learned in the respiratory system. They also can give off other things like urea. So it's like a toxin that when it builds up in our body, we get really sick, but our kidneys filter it out and excrete it in our urine. And that's where the word urine even comes from. Urea is a major toxin that, or byproduct that's given off there. And also when we look at the endocrine system, so there's a hormone that influences our kidneys too. It, our, brain, or our brain and hormones know if we are dehydrated, so it tells our kidneys to keep more water. If you drink a whole pitcher of water in a half hour, what happens? You pee all the time, right? So then your body's like, oh wait, we have too much water, let's pee it all off. So um, hormones tell our kidneys to do that, to keep water if we're dehydrated. Yeah, if you take a fluid pill, it yeah. tells our body, your kidneys to give off more water, so you'll have to pee more often. Yep. Um, so just connecting it to the other, so we'll look how the circulatory system connects. So we already know about the circulatory system, so we'll see how it connects to our kidneys. And then we have the kidney, and then within the kidney is the nephron. So that's kind of the little functional unit of a kidney. So, um, yeah, and then the bladder, which stores our urine. So we'll look at all those pieces. Um, we won't touch on the and or the urinary system disorders until next week. So on Monday we'll look at those. Wednesday. Or sorry, Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> right. The next Monday. So the quiz for this would be not next week, but the Monday after. What's that date? Because of my course that I took and that one day was switched, all of our body structure and function dates are kind of shifted ahead one. So. Yeah, because we won't. No, sorry, no, no, we're not doing it early. So we'll do. We're still doing that one on the. Um, right. So we'll do this class, and we'll do next Wednesday for the urinary system. And then the quiz for it will be that following Monday, which is, what does somebody, the 10th. So the quiz for this will be on the 10th. Yeah, so, so everything's kind of shifted by one class. <laughs> so I think we should probably wrap up on the 31st, if I'm not mistaken. July 31st, I think, okay. If nothing else happens between now and then. Um, okay. So these are just some basics, and I'll go through this again. So we already said the kidneys are the two bean-shaped organs, each kidney. So those nephrons, those tiny little functional units of the kidney, which we'll talk more about, they are what actually makes the urine, and there's millions of them in each kidney. Um, so then ureters, and we'll talk about this again, ureters are tubes that connect the kidney to the bladder. And then urine is stored in the bladder until you feel like you need to urinate. And then it passes through the urethra. And then meatus, there's that word that we use some in personal care. So that's the opening to the urethra, the urinary meatus. <coughs> so connecting those together, so the circulatory system, because blood has to get to the kidneys somehow in order for your kidneys to filter it, right? So the circulatory system is direct, directly connected to your kidneys. Um, uh, so there's your kidneys and then the ureter, those long tubes that connect the kidneys to the bladder, and then urethra. So there's lots of kind of diagrams in this one, so if it helps when you're Studying, you can go back to DCI and look through them. They're kind of clear, more clear than your textbook one. But okay, so if you just take one kidney, and we'll look at the kidney by itself, I think is maybe the next slide. So if you're taking one kidney and cutting it open, it would look like that. And we'll look at some of those different structures in there. And then if you just take a piece of this kidney, in here, like in that one piece, there'd probably be a million of these tiny little nephrons. 
if you take that one piece, so that's where this, what did you say it looked like, all kinds of tubes or, what did you say, straws or something? The nephron, so that's a nephron, so taking one piece of that, and then we'll look at what the nephron does. So this is the guy that actually filters the blood, cha like changes up the salts and the water, and then creates it, makes it into urine, so. Kidney stones can happen kind of anywhere in these ducts. Yeah. Very painful, yeah. My mom had kidney stones and she said she'd rather give birth to 20 children than have another kidney stone. <laughs> yeah. And that's one of the disorders we'll talk about too. And so will kidney infection. Yeah. So there's your kidney. So renal artery, so where's the, and renal vein, so you have the heart, which one is bringing oxygenated blood to the kidney? The renal artery, because the artery comes away from the heart, right? Comes away from the heart and gives oxygenated blood. So the renal vein will go back to the heart, right, with deoxygenated blood after it's done in the kidney. So the main part of the kidney is ki kind of broken up into two different locations. So this kind of inner part here um, that kind of has these triangle shaped guys in it is the medulla. And then this outer part is the cortex. So I tend to remember medulla because M starts with the same letter as middle, so it's closer to the middle than the cortex. Not the whole middle, this middle part here is a different word, but these, all these like kind of triangle guys here around the middle is the medulla. Oh, you don't have one? Yeah, but the cortex is the outer part, so be careful with that. <laughs> right, so the cortex is the outer part of the kidney, and the medulla is this inner part with these triangles, okay? And then nephrons are teeny tiny millions of little guys that kind of, they cover both of these areas. So they kind of start in the outer cortex, and they loop down into the medulla. So this very center part, that's where once your nephrons make urine, the urine collects in the renal pelvis. So this is called the renal pelvis, this middle part, that then drains into the ureter. So we'll look at that again after I tell you how urine is made. We'll kind of follow the path of it. I don't know if you guys will like this video, video or not, but... Never mind. <laughs> Let's see here. It's just a, an overview. The outer part of the kidney is called the cortex. Inside the cortex is the medulla. Urine collects in the renal pelvis and drains from the kidney through a tube called the ureter. A tiny branch of the renal artery carries blood to each nephron for processing. So we'll look at this again. Okay, so we'll look at that again after I explain it to you. <laughs> then maybe you'll be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. That makes it's familiar to me anyway. So, like I said, nephrons are kind of your little functional units, they do all of the work. Um, so, in general, they have tubules. So, you see all of those little tubes happening in the, the nephron diagram. That's on the second page there if you're looking at your worksheet. And then it has the blood vessels that bring blood 
to those tubules. So basically, it's kind of those two structures that are happening there. And more than a million in a kidney. So we'll come back to this. So there are kind of four main things that are happening in this nephron. So it's filtering the blood. Once it filters, it has to reabsorb. Sometimes when it filters it, it sometimes gives off too much water, gives off too much um, salt. So that tubule will kind of reabsorb some of that again. Secretion is giving off some more toxins and waste. And then excretion. So that's when it's created urine and it's passed it out of the kidney. So those four kind of um, purposes or functions of that nephron. Filtering, reabsorbing when it's given off too much water and salt. Secretion, so secreting more of those toxins and waste. And excretion, getting rid of the urine out of the kidney. So we'll talk about that again. This is just another kind of a more complicated drawing or diagram of the kidney. So it's showing all of the blood vessels kind of wrapping around um, through the medulla and up into the cortex. And so all these are tiny capillaries. Um, so that's where exchange happens, right? So it's the same with the nephron. So all of these tiny capillaries are connected to these nephrons that are going, these millions of nephrons around the kidney. So this is kind of what one would look like in, an in a microscope. Um, so this is a different form of that diagram you have in your uh, worksheet of a nephron. And so it's I haven't even done the nephron yet, so <laughs> yeah, I'll probably draw some stuff yet. Um, yeah, after I go through it, I have a notebook brought up there, and I'll draw these, and we'll go through step by step, like the process that it would go through. Um, this is just kind of reviewing it to start. So here are those arteries we talked about, so those renal arteries. So they have the oxygenated blood, and they've come to the kidney for filtration. So inside the nephron, it turns into like this big clump of capillaries. So that's what they call the glomerulus. So it's all kinds of capillaries all wrapped up in, into a ball. And so that's where filtration happens. So water, salt, toxins, all kinds of things are forced out of that clump of capillaries into this round structure over top of that clump. So that round structure is Bowman's capsule. Okay, Bowman's capsule. B O W M A N S. So it's okay if this feels crazy because it's the first time you've heard these terms. So sometimes things like the digestion system can be a little bit easier because you've heard of the small intestine, you've heard of the large intestine. Not everybody knows about a nephron or how it works. So a lot of these terms will be new, but we'll keep going over it. It's supposed to feel new and crazy, right? <laughs> okay, so the arteries bring blood to be filtered. It's made this tangle of capillaries called a glomerulus. And that glomerulus is inside a Bowman's capsule, okay? So all of, so a lot of water, a lot of salt, some toxins, some drugs are forced out of the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. So that's how it starts to get into all of these yellowish tubes up here, okay? So once that happens and that initial kind of filtration happens in that Bowman's capsule, it's called filtrate. So it's not called urine yet. It's called filtrate. So the filtrate will start traveling through these tubules in this long loop back up into these tubules. So during this whole part here, your body's kind of reabsorbing what it shouldn't have given off. So when it's up here, it just filters a lot. 
So the rest of this tubule is kind of reabsorbing some of the water it shouldn't have given off, reabsorbing some of the salts it shouldn't have given off. All of these capillaries are wrapping around the tubule, so they're able to do that. They're able to take back some water, take back some salt, but then it's also giving off some things that it may not have. So there could be a lot of maybe drug or toxin here, so it can also put some back into it too. So it's still <laughs> filtrate when it's coming through here, um, but it's concentrating it because it's taking some more of that water away. So it's becoming more concentrated as it works through the tubule. And so there are some different names happening here in this tubule. Um, this loop down here is a loop of Henley. A-T-N-L-Y. We're not going to worry about descending or ascending limb, although it makes sense, like one descends and one ascends, right? So we won't worry about that stuff, but this whole loop here is the loop of Henle. And then these are both tubules here. So one is proximal and one is distal. So does everyone remember what proximal means? Closer. These tubes here on either side of the loop. I will draw one. You can take a picture if you want. Okay. Um, so there's two tubes here. So one right after the Bowman's capsule, yeah. and this one right after the loop of Henley. They're attached, to They're attached to the loop of Henley. Yep. So proximal means closer, right? So one of these tubules is proximal, and that's the one closer to where it was filtered, so closer to that Bowman's capsule. So one is called the proximal tubule, and that's that piece between the Bowman's capsule and the loop of Henley. And then distal means further away, right? So distal tubule is further away from the Bowman's capsule. So on the other side of the loop of Henley, you have the other tubule. So don't worry, you don't have to understand this the first time we talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> By the third, you'll get some of it at least, I'm sure. Okay. So then after it does all of that, so it's filtered, it um, reabsorbs some of that water, so it's concentrating the, concentrating the filtrate, it's secreted off some more toxins. Once it's finished doing all of that, it gets emptied into this collecting duct, and that's where it's called urine. So once it enters that collecting duct, that filtrate is now urine. Right. Then it's urine. Down here, sorry. Oh, on yours? Uh, yeah, it's urine there. And that urine will then travel into your renal pelvis. So there's your nephron. So this is a nephron, for example. So you can kind of see there's your glomerulus, there's your Bowman's capsule. Here's all these tubules, the loop of Henle, and then it's the collecting duct. And that collecting duct goes into the renal pelvis. And so then it's urine that's going to go out. <coughs> Are you ready for the test? Oh, no. Next week. <laughs> <laughs> the pre-test and the post-test. Yeah. Okay. So in your diagram, your diagram has the Bowman's capsule. It has the one renal artery coming in and the one coming out. But it doesn't have any of these capillaries around it. So and it says draw your capillaries. Yeah. Have it coming, having... It on number two, isn't it number two? Uh, oh, sorry, it's number three now. Sorry, I added one in and I, I moved something and didn't change the number. Sorry. So, <laughs> on question four, it should be on number three, on diagram three. I, did, I switched those around and I didn't change that. Sorry. So, these nephron things are found on the tubule, the cortex, and number two 
Yeah, so they kind of, this part, the loop of Henley pretty much goes down into the medulla, but the rest of it is pretty much in the cortex. They're both kind of, so the, it it covers kind of into both sections. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll draw it. This is your first review. <laughs> so nephron. Okay. Here's another kind of more simplified version. <laughs> what? This is a fire plan. <laughs> You're right. It does. Except there's only one exit, so they're in trouble. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. They have lots of windows here, right? Yeah. Okay, so here's kind of a more simplified version. So your renal artery coming away from your heart, high oxygenated, but it also has lots of toxins, right? Coming into your glomerulus. So that's that big, twisted bunch of capillaries inside. What? A pretzel, okay, yes. Twisted bunch, yeah. So the glomerulus inside the Bowman's capsule. So that's filtering all kinds of water, salt, all kinds of stuff. And then it's called filtrate. So the rest of this proximal tubule, hen loop of Henle, distal tubule, it's just reclaiming some of that water, making it more concentrated, reclaiming some of those salts, and also secreting some more toxins. Once it does all of that, it's then urine in the collecting duct. Am I in all of your pictures? It would be. <laughs> That's okay. And then excretion happens when it leaves there as urine. So those are the uh, four steps that I talked about in the previous slide filtration, reabsorption secretion and excretion. So you can apply it to this diagram. It has lovely colors and whatnot. But remember if you print it though, if you print it in black and white, you're not going to have any of those colors and it's not going to make any sense. So look at it on D2L if you're using this diagram <laughs> or print it in color. <laughs> okay, so let's just watch that video again and then I have another little video so see if it makes any more Most sense part of the tissue is called the cortex inside the cortex is the medulla urine collects from the renal pelvis and drains from the kidneys through a tube called the urine a tiny branch of the renal artery carries blood to each nephron for processing a tiny vein carries blood away blood pressure forces fluid through the walls of the structure of capillaries called the glomerulus, and it collects in the cup-shaped Bowman's capsule. The filtrate is refined as it passes through the twisted nephron tubule. Useful substances are returned to the blood, and the remainder collects as urine. Refined urine is carried by the collecting duct into the renal pelvis for excretion from the body. Did it make any more sense that time to some? It's okay if it didn't either, okay? I know. I know. Okay, so let's draw a couple of things here. It is. What? Oh my god. My kids like it when I draw too. Filtration, reabsorption, yep. So in that diagram, it kind of showed us where each of those things... Oh, look, I'm trying to touch the screen. Everything should be touch screen. Okay, th this is a good one. So yeah, filtrate happens right there in Bowman's capsule. Filtration happens right there in that first Bowman's capsule. Secretion and reabsorption happening in the tubule and the loop of Henle. Absorption, reabsorption and some and secretion, tubule and loop of Henle, and then excretion happens out the collecting duct. Yep. Okay. 
Okay, actually, let's watch this video, and then I'll draw a picture. And this one's on D2L if, it, if you like it. If you don't, you never have to watch it again. So that osmoregulation and the wave. Okay, so we can kind of follow some toxin through our body if you like. So what your worksheet says in urea, which is a major waste component that we give off in our, um, in our urine, okay? Oh. So, okay, let's, 
try this. I don't know. So urea is circulating in our blood. So we have an artery um, with blood flow happening here. Okay. So one, this artery, artery will branch off. So our urea is floating around in here. Let's uh, make them into a blob. Okay. So that artery will branch off to go to a kidney, and that's when it is called a renal artery. Renal is the term that you'll see used for a kidney. Okay, so our little urea toxin or waste or whatever you want to call them, it's a waste product really, um, is traveling in our bloodstream, in our artery, and it makes its way into a renal artery. So that renal artery will enter, so I'm going to make our kidney a little bit big here, okay? So everyone can see them. So that renal artery will enter. So this would probably be our left kidney, right? Okay. So I'll just add our guy here traveling in. So all of this renal artery starts to branch off into all kinds of smaller and smaller. Does anyone remember what they an artery branches into? What's the next size down? Arterial, yes. And arterials become capillaries, yes. So these are branching off into arterials and then they're going to end in capillaries, okay? So inside here is kind of this little cavity almost in the inner part of your kidney. And that's where urine will collect. So I'll label some of the kidney here in this diagram, okay? And that cavity goes off down here. So once urine is collected in that cavity, it goes off on its way to the bladder. And it's called a ureter. So that's the tube that ureter. How do I, there, I think that's right. <laughs> ureter. Okay. So that is where urine will pass out of the kidney into the bladder. And so it will have another one off here going to the other kidney. So we haven't made any urine yet, though, with our urea guy there, okay? So he's going to continue down one of these. And then we'll come back to him in a second. So this outer part of the kidney, you guys remember, is the cortex. And this outer bit. Cortex. And there are all these kind of structures that are triangle-like here outside of the renal pelvis. And that's where, that's called the medulla. So this section will be called that. Okay. So medulla. And if you get cortex and medulla mixed up, M, medulla, M, middle. So it's closer to the middle, right? No, I didn't label your renal pelvis. So all of this in here is a renal pelvis. Inner cavity, and that's kind of the inner cavity that collects the urine. Yes. So the renal pelvis so the renal pelvis is the inner cavity that collects urine and sends to to ureter. Yep. OK. 
Okay. It's a holding vessel. That's what your bladder is. So um, it will get down there to him. Okay, so our urea has fallen in our bloodstream. It's right made its way into the renal artery. It's now in the kidney, and it's gone through our arterioles, and it's into some capillaries now. So that's kind of where our nephron will be located. So I'll draw a separate picture for our nephron. Okay, everyone okay so far following our urea? <laughs> I don't know. Well, my daughter is doing some biology, <laughs> but no. <laughs> I should. That would probably be a good idea, honestly. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I sit at home and practice. No, I don't actually. That would be a good idea though. Okay, so that same renal artery came into the kidney, arterial changed into a capillary. Yep, so we're going to draw a nephron, okay? So that capillary is ending in this um, clump of blood vessels. Oh, the glomerulus. Good. So now we're into the nephron, right? Just wait. <laughs> nephron. Right. So up here, so we've made our way into the nephron. So now I'm going to draw the nephron. Are we good? So there's literally millions of nephrons in here, so I'm not going to bother drawing a nephron inside there, but if you took it away and used a microscope to look at it, so we'll start there, okay? Were you going to ask something? Yeah. Yep. The capillary wraps all around that nephron, it's not just around the, the it viewers? Glomer yes, it will come back out. Yes, it will. Okay. It will wrap around the tube again. Any more questions so far? Tammy, did you have something? Did you have a question? Or did I answer it? No? no. Sorry, <laughs> maybe you didn't. Or Caitlin? Did you have a question? No? Okay. All right. So let's do our. Oh, wait. Let me label our glomerulus. How do I spell glomerulus, guys? Oh, yeah, here we go. Glomerulus. So that group of blood vessels there is a glomerulus. What's backwards? Oh, your diagram? Yeah. So one of the reasons I give you all kinds of different diagrams is because really a nephron looks nothing like this. So the more ways you see it, the more you'll be able to apply it to different diagrams. So they're all going to have the same kind of structures though. Okay, and I'm, not, I'm even going to give you a coloring sheet that will look slightly different, but same structures, okay? Okay, so where does filtration happen? Yeah, so Surrounding this, this glomerulus is the Bowman's capsule. So filtration happens in there. And the filtrate, so once it filters, the stuff that it's filtering out is now called filtrate. So our tiny um, urea guy was in here. And he got passed, uh oh, now he's the same color. He got passed into Bowman's capsule there, okay? And now it's called filtrate. Let me. So this is Bowman's capsule. Why did I do that? Bowman's. So now it 
is called filtrate. Okay, so now we're going to enter into a tubule. So which will come first, proximal or distal? Proximal. Proximal, proximal is closer to Bowman's capsule, okay? So it might twist or turn a bit or or whatever and then go down into this long loop. Proximal tubule, sorry. Yep. Okay, so here's our little urea guy. He's now floating in the filtrate. Our proximal tubule. Okay, so our urea is traveling through the proximal tubule. So, what is the name of this loop? Loop of Henle. So our urea will keep going through this loop of Henle. So what things are happening in this loop of Henle and the tubules? Reabsorption. What's reabsorption? Yeah. It almost always. And secretion. So what's secretion? <laughs> giving off more toxins. So if it missed anything up here, it will give off more down here. So secretion is getting rid of more waste and toxins, and reabsorption is taking back a lot of water. If we had damage in this tubule, and we went directly from our Bowman's capsule straight to urine, we would get dehydrated very, very fast. We would filter out most of the water we drank, and we would just dry up and blow away pretty much. Um, okay, so loop of Henley, you already said that, didn't you? So loop of Henley. Yep. So up here, I'll, this filtration happens. So it filters out a whole lot of water, lots of salt, lots of toxins. So this is basically just refining it. So it's reabsorption means it's taking reabsorbing some of that water. Because if we just peed out what this did, we would get rid of all of our water. So this is like concentrating our urine. So it's taking back, reabsorbing some of our water, reabsorbing some of our salt. And then it still will, if it missed any toxins, it will secrete that into the urine. Yeah. So we can continue our capillary here. So after our bowman, or after our um, glomerulus, we still have all these capillaries that kind of circle all around our tubules and our loop of Henle. Okay. Yeah. So, so another kidneys also need oxygen. So while our capillaries are all around these nephrons, it's also giving off our oxygen. So that's why I'll kind of change its color. It's picking up carbon dioxide. Um, there would be in an actual kidney, they'd be everywhere, but it does most of the secreting and reabsorbing, reabsorbing around these tubules and the loop of Henley. Okay. So this is your renal vein. <laughs> okay. So 
in your diagram wants you to draw your capillaries around your tubules and your loop of Henle, that's what it's asking you to do. And so this would go back to the heart. Why is it doing that? Gonna make me draw really <laughs> Well, you're starting to know, so that's good. So our urea, he is going to go into our urine, so he's still traveling. He's not being reabsorbed, he's not being um, he's not moving anywhere. He's just staying in the filtrate. So all along here our urine's being refined. So it's concentrating. It's gathering up some more toxins. And by the time it gets to here, it's going to enter the collecting duct, which goes into the renal pelvis. And there goes our little urea bag. So it is now urine. And this is a collecting duct. And they're distal tubule. And there's our urea continuing out to the renal pelvis. And there's your renal pelvis right here in the center, which goes to your ureter and to your bladder. So here's the good news, though. That's it. <laughs> so there's not a million different structures involved. Like, uh, there's not a lot of different organs. It's pretty much kidney, ureter, bladder, and then you have the urethra and the meatus at the end. But the nephron is your biggest piece for this. Do I get you to draw many things? I don't know. But probably not. But I did get you to draw a neuron, didn't I? So I'll do this again next week. And then we'll do the disorders for the urinary system. But. Um, as far as anatomy and physiology of the kidney, that's pretty much it. So we'll focus on that, and you guys will all be able to tell me how urine works at the end of it, I'm sure. What? Goes in, blood goes in, feeds, feeds.